was Dear Donald. You can sort of see it there. There it is. Letters from the Loving Deplorable. I am the Loving Deplorable. <laughs> I guess I've had a kind of a, you know, an affection. I, I spent many, many years in New York. Uh, I had 10 different professions. I'm a little bit of a workaholic. I was a school teacher. I had an acting school for children. I had my own television show. I produced and hosted 400 talk shows in wow. New York. So I was always busy, busy, busy. And of course, Donald Trump was a really important figure in New York, particularly uh, when he was starting to get interested in politics. I found him very fascinating. And I used to go to a lot of his events and you know, kind of hobnob a little bit in some of the art shows. And I got to know him. And I got to admire the work that he was doing with um, uh, people in politics. I never thought in a million years he would run for president. That I wasn't expecting. I don't think anybody was expecting that. When he came down the escalator with his gorgeous wife, oh, my God, what a beautiful woman. What a magnificent moment that was it was drama it was glamour it was intriguing it was unexpected and i think it captured the imagination of people far more than we expected it would far more than even he expected it would it, it had a life of its own and for him to be running for president was not only unprecedented, it was shocking. I mean, nobody like him had ever done that before. He didn't have all the political experience that many of these other people did, but he had a world experience, an international experience, a business experience, which was fascinating. He had his own TV show, which was very successful for many, many years. So the, he was a man of many, many talents, and he intrigued us all, and he sure intrigued me. And I <laughs> had nine careers, you know. One of them turned out to be writing Donald Trump books. I never in a million years <laughs> thought I would be doing that. That was not on my That's list awesome. of achievements. But here's the first one. Dear Donald, I guess I was a loving deplorable. So this book, which was really uh, letters from me to Donald. Yes. And they were as much about me as they were about Donald. It was about me being a suburban woman, you know, a career woman, a mother. Um, I have had a couple of marriages. My first husband was very ill and passed away. That was a tragedy. Came from a very uh, famous family. And then uh, I married again, and, and that was a good marriage. And he passed away. I thought, oh, my God, I'm touch of death. I'm never going to get married again. But I'm now the, the lovely man in my life, and I refuse to get married. We've been together for a long, long time, 20 years. It's a good relationship. But, you know, I feel like I'm a bad omen. So when the marriage is over now. But I got interested in Donald Trump. And everything that was going on with him. So, yeah. so many different careers. I had an acting school for children. The career number 10 was writing down a company. So, here's the first one. So, so, Sandra, have you ever, have, has, you've written all these books that well, this are letters to one. Trump? The second one was Dear John of Four More Years. Yeah. And it came out right after that, he lost the election. And so Amazon took it down. I couldn't understand that. I never thought he'd lose that election. The truth is, I don't think he lost that election. I could be wrong, but a lot of people... Uh, I don't know. If you, I, 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 I don't think you're going to get any argument out of me and Dan on that one. I'm willing to be wrong. <laughs> so yeah, I wrote that second book, and now it's up again because... Here he is, you know, running for president again, and a good chance that he's going to win. You know, it's it's not even a long shot at this point. He's got a really good shot at winning. 
And if he does, my third book is ready to go. It's Dear Donald, A Rainbow in a Winter Sky. Is he a rainbow? Yes, indeed he is. Is he perfect? No, indeed he's not. Did he do everything right? Not really. Did he do a lot that was right? Yes. Did he do more things that no one else had ever done that I had seen? Yeah. I thought he was pretty remarkable in the way that he ran the country. And will he do it again? Good Lord. I don't know. I pray for the man every day. I don't know. I think he has the capability. I think he has the intelligence. I think he learned a great deal from that first run. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm scared to tell you the truth. I think the world with Joe Biden at the helm has been turned into a disaster. I, I, I don't like any of the things that he's done. I don't like who he's become. I don't like any of the decisions that he's made. I don't like the way he's running the country. I'm terrified of everything he's done. I think it's been very destructive and uh, dangerous. And we have gazillions of people in this country. And we don't know who a lot of them are. And many of them came in. We don't know where they are or who they are. It's dangerous. So uh, where do we go from here? Okay, hope, so Dan, I hope somewhere positive. What do you think? Well, 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 what? Uh, let's let's go to Dan Perkins. I I know Dan has got a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to share an experience with you, Sandra. Um, I watched the same thing that you watched. I watched him come down the staircase at, at Trump Tower, and um. I had watched his television show for years and thought he was an outrageous personality. Uh, but w the first time that I saw him and Lenia together, I was taken back to John Kennedy. John Kennedy was not a perfect man by any means. And we're finding out more and more how imperfect he was. But the two of them had great charisma. And the combination of Donald Trump and Millennia was great charisma. It was. And, and it had been a long time since we had anybody that had that powerful combination of charisma. And I think that's part of the reason why America clung to Donald Trump, because it was not just Donald Trump, it was his wife. And the couple made a powerful, powerful combination. And, um, whoa. <laughs> we have got uh, Sandra Lee with us today. <laughs> she joins us live it, 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 here it on away, the right. program. And, of course, the so, amazing Dan Perkins. Uh, um, so, so Sandra, go, 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 go ahead, Dan. Pick up where you left off there, my friend. I was just going to say that, that that charisma is what attracted him to millions and billions of people. This time, this time around, he has a totally different charisma. She's still absolutely gorgeous, and together they have great charisma. But what's different this time? is that he's become a martyr. And, and people in the minorities, the blacks, Hispanics, Puerto Ricans, have great affinity for him because they've seen how the legal system in this country has treated him in many ways similar to the way they treat them. So there's a kinship between the minority community and Donald Trump that wasn't there in 2016 or 2020, but it is there now. And what he's doing is defending the Constitution. He's defending what made our country great. And I, I have great concerns, as you do, that we have millions and millions of people 
who come into this country illegally and they have no assimilation into our culture and our history. When you want to come into this country legally as a citizen, there are certain things you have to do. You have to learn to be able to speak English. You have to understand the currency. You have to understand the laws. Those people that come across the border illegally, the tens of millions of them, and get all the freebies that they get from the governments, both federal and local, have no relationship with the rest of us because they have not assimilated into the American culture. They want to continue their existing culture, whether they're Egyptian, Iranian, or whatever they are. They want to continue that culture as to become part of the melting pot. And that's the, that's the thing that concerns me more than anything else, is that we're being torn apart as a country because we're no longer assimilating people into the American culture. Well, clearly, Joe Biden, I'll turn that off. That's my phone, which never stops right. <laughs> Um, Joe Biden is pulling all these people in from all over the world because he needs people to vote for him. And if he keeps giving them this handout and they're all needing this kind of support, he's got them in the palm of his hand and they'll vote for him. They're not politically savvy. All they know is what they had was terrible. What they're getting is better. You know, they're they're getting free education. They're getting housing. They're getting free food. They're getting all kinds of support. These are the ones that he knows about. A lot of them have gotten into the country. They don't even know where they are. But the ones they know where they are, boy, are they showering them with support. They're buying their votes. They're buying their votes. And they're using them as cheap labor. And it's a horrible, horrible thing that he's doing. First of all, he's taking jobs away from Americans, really good jobs, who deserved a decent salary. And now they're not only losing a decent salary, they're losing their jobs altogether. All these jobs, you look at the jobs report, and Biden will brag about what a wonderful job report it is. No, it isn't. Not at all. Most of these jobs are part-time jobs and they're juggling things around yep. so that they don't have to be, give people full wages. And all of these jobs are going to these migrants and our people are going to be suffering. All the things that Joe Biden is supporting is going to take away from our people. You know, the, the electric cars, my father was an automobile dealer. He came from Lebanon. When he came from Lebanon, he had to learn the English language, to read it, to write it, to speak it. He had to bring something to the table. He couldn't just come here as a taker. He couldn't do that. And, and he built an incredible business, and he was very, very successful. He was the American dream. These people are coming in for what? To be cheap labor or to get a free ride or to give a vote to the Democrats who are no longer the Democratic Party that we knew growing up. I don't know who these people are, but they're not anybody I want running the country. <laughs> and a lot of them are are from countries that are extremely anti-American. And they're pushing very anti-American policies. So I'm quite frankly terrified by what's going on. And I don't know if we can correct it. I don't know. And you know, it's happened before. There have been other presidents who've been through this and have sent people back to their home countries. But it's not an easy thing to do. Well, and, it's, it's, you're in a situation where you're right. Eisenhower, up until what's going on, had the greatest deportation numbers in it of any president. But it took him eight years to deport six million people eight years donald trump's got going to be a, a lame duck president the day he takes the oath of office he got four years i am concerned whether what he can do and on top of that i want i'm curious what your thoughts are 
if he comes in and decides he wants to start deporting these people that are here illegally in the country, they're not going to want to go. And they've already been told that many of the governments where they're from don't want them back. If I start taking away their benefits and all the freebies, what are they going to do? Are we going to have serious battles in our country with people who came here illegally and no longer are getting because we've changed administrations? And number two, if we look at what's going on, I have concerns for Mr. Trump's life because I think that there are so, so many people. When we have a country that allows individuals to come on the street and demand that the federal government support the genocide of the Jewish people and the Jewish state. We have, we have college students who are saying it's, we should be killing the Jews. We should be getting rid of the country of Israel. That's to me is, is terrifying that we have people that Biden and his administration are supporting that are outright talking about the murder of men and women and children of the Jewish tradition and eliminating them off the face of the earth. That's, that's not what America ever, ever stood for, but that's what's going on in our country today. And you know, these people that are surrounding the White House, they're, they're tearing things down, they're sometimes being a bit violent, they're dangerous, they don't know what they're talking about. You know, some of the things that they're professing, they don't even know what's going on in the countries that they're trying to deport. I mean, first of all, they're, they're murdering gay people in those countries. They're hanging them in the streets, you know, and then some of these people are gay, and I'm so confused about what, why are they supporting this craziness it doesn't make any sense. There's something right. so insane going on, and it's being run by uh, not necessarily Palestinians, not necessarily people from these countries. It's coming from political forces that want to change the whole country to their liking. I don't trust anything that's going on there. I don't think it's real. I don't think it's honest. I think it's bought and paid for, and I think Biden is bought and paid for it. And it's a terrible thing for me to say, but I feel he's dishonest. I think his entire presidency and many, many years of his professional life have been about being bought and paid for. And this is what I'm feeling watching him over the last number of years. Um, his son, what happened today in court, clearly he was guilty. It's nothing compared to some of the other things that he's done. And when they find him guilty about some of these other things, so much evidence now has been gathered about how terribly dishonest and corrupt this young man has been. He's not so young anymore. The Biden thing is crumbling drastically. And Trump, God bless him, I fear for his life. And Trump, God bless him, honestly, I don't know how we can straighten this all out. In 40 years? This is why I'm for DeSantis. And I know that sounds crazy because they talk about this one's going for VP and that one's going for VP and the other one's going for VP. Guess what? None of them are as qualified for that position as Ron DeSantis is. You want me to tell you what I think? I'm going to tell you what I think. Donald Trump should be president. He'll do wonderful things in four years cannot handle it all. Ron DeSantis is spectacular. I have a home in Florida. I have a home in Ohio. Ron DeSantis in Florida is a knight in shining armor. He is not just liked by Floridians, he's adored by them. He's not just respected by them, they are in awe of him. What he has done in Florida has not been done in any other state. He's amazing. And Donald Trump knows that too. He was a little annoyed that he ran for president, Ron. 
But at the same time, I can see him edging Ron DeSantis into a front row position. I could be crazy, but I don't think I'm crazy. I think that's who he's going to pick for his VP. And I think it would be the most brilliant choice in the world. After that, I like the fellow who is the head of the House of Representatives. I think he's terrific. I think he's a good, solid, spiritual man. I think he's kind. I think he's brilliant. And I think he's going to be the third one in line for the presidency. We get that together, we'll have the Republicans in charge for four years, then eight years, then eight more years, and that'll be the 20 years we need to straighten out the United States of America. It's not going to happen in six months. It's going to be a long, slow process. Donald Trump is an amazing man. He'll get things done faster than we think he can, if he can stay alive. Do you think they're not trying to kill this man? I pray for him all day, every day. I pray for this man because you know what? It's going to take a miracle for him to stay alive. They're going to try to kill him. They're already trying. They're trying to lock him up for life. Very true. Very true. And um, There is hope. One of the things that's important about what happened today with Hunter, didn't happen today, it happened earlier, is that the laptop computer is now in the evidence system, which means that more people will be able to look at it for the possibility of defending cases. It is that laptop computer which ultimately will be the downfall, in my opinion, of Joe Biden. And it may happen after he leaves office, but he's going to be proven to be the most corrupt president in the history of our nation and lies more so than anybody ever has to the American people. And and we've made it, we've made America a two different justice system. There is a justice system for the elites, primarily Democrats, and a justice system for the rest of us. And we're seeing that play in all over the country, where Republicans are being indicted and Democrats, you know, Hillary Clinton destroys 30,000 emails. Does she, get, does she even get a hearing? No. No, no charges. Yes. Donald Trump has papers that he's entitled to have as president, and they're trying to trying to indict him and get him out of the race. This has never been happened before that an incumbent president is using the power of the government to try and keep his opponent from running against him. Never happened before. And that's part of, of Biden's legacy. And and that's that's corruption beyond the pale that we have. We, it's it's Santa Domingo politics and dictator. That's what this country's become. And it it's not my country. Not my country either if it's gonna continue the way it's going. Uh, it's going to take a miracle. Now, you look at what's happened in the last six weeks, the last three weeks, the last two weeks. Amazing amount of money that Donald Trump has raised. It's staggering. It really is staggering. I have to tell you, I, I wasn't expecting that. And I am so pro Donald Trump, it isn't even funny. <laughs> but I was not expecting that. And I am watching something I was not expecting. Everybody who I thought would never support Donald Trump is starting to move in that direction. The Hispanics, different cultural groups, different age groups, 
um, former Democrats, old and young, women, suburban women, all the people they thought who would never, ever go for Donald Trump. The suburban women are saying, good Lord, my children's lives are on the line here. Their future is on the line. Is Donald Trump a saint? No, he's not a saint. But you have to give some credit to the fact that the man has changed who he is. He's not who he was 20 years ago or 30 years ago or 15 years ago or even 10 years ago. He has grown and grown and grown and he's still growing. I'm watching him evolve and grow. You know, the fact that he says, well, he's not going to call Hillary Clinton to task and he's not going to do anything about necessarily Joe Biden. I don't like that. I don't like that. Donald Trump is changing every five minutes for the better. I think he should do something about it. I don't think those people should get away with what they're getting away with. They should not get away with what they got away with. What they did was wrong and evil and hurtful to the country. And it went on and on and on. And they lied and they sabotaged his potential running for president. What they did was very, very dishonest and undermined his run and, and having a second term in, in a presidential run, which would have been very helpful to the country. So um, I'm hopeful. I'm watching Donald Trump change every minute. And I'm watching the nation change every minute. Have you seen what has happened in the last two weeks? The amount of support that has gone his way. I didn't like the last um, gathering that he had. The, the mics weren't working. The cameras weren't working. You know, they're trying to sabotage everything he does. Yep. And millions of people come to see him, and they're trying to sabotage it. So I'm leaving for him every step of the way, but I'm Yeah, yeah, see, bad guys. I, I, I agree, Sandra. I think uh, a lot of times the uh, they do try to sabotage him. <laughs> it is it is a bad deal. But uh, as we wrap up here with everyone, let's start with Dan Perkins. Dan, how do we get your books and get involved with what you're doing online, my friend? The books are available uh, at Amazon. Uh, the third, the the book on Sad Eyes, the second second volume is out. It's a great story. It's historical romance from the Second World War, and um, I do have a new business relationship with an organization called the <clears throat> excuse me, the Fentanyl Test dot com. Fentanyl will kill two hundred thousand Americans this year uh, in my part of the woods in Southwest Florida. Uh, seven seven out of ten drugs are fentanyl based. So go, they've got a wonderful test that the parents can use at home, and it's the fentanyltest.com. So Sandra Lee, how do we get your uh, get your books and everything you're involved in? Well, now you can get them on Amazon. You can get them from any bookstore, and. Um, I hope you will. I hope you will. The third one, I hope I put it out. I'm not going to put it out unless Donald Trump wins. The third book is Dear Donald, A Rainbow in a Winter Sky. And it expects him to win the presidency. If he does, I can guarantee you he will be a rainbow in a winter sky. We need him there. But every step that he takes, his life is in danger. So if you believe in any kind of prayer whatsoever, I don't care what your religion is, if you're a Christian, if you're a Jew, if you're an atheist, pray to the stars, but pray for that man because he needs that kind of protection. And when all of us are in our hearts sending him that kind of support, he has a fighting chance. There are too many people who want to destroy him. And he's a fighting chance to save the American dream. 
So thank you for letting me talk about that. I appreciate it. It was wonderful to hear about. I haven't read all of your books, so I'm going to look forward to reading one more. That's for sure. I think thank that's you. awesome that you've read Dan's books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is amazing. Well, uh, Sandra, thanks for doing this. I will talk to you next week. And Dan, I will talk to you next week as well. Thank you, guys. Nice seeing Thank you again. You. Thank you. Lovely you to be with you all. Appreciate it. There they go. That is Dan Perkins and the fabulous Sandra Lee. If you want to get a hold of us online, you can do so over there at